Hi everyone, my name is Suchez Bupala. I'm an internal medicine resident at UT Southwestern and I'll be talking about hypoxemia in carcinoma. The case revolves around an 83-year-old woman without prior cardiac history, presenting with weight loss and chronic diarrhea. She had a CT abdomen done, which showed a mesenteric mass with some liver mets, and a subsequent biopsy, which revealed well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor. She was started on octreotide at that time. Over the next few months, however, she began developing worsening dyspnea on exertion and hypoxemia. Her resting SpO2 was 87, her DSATs to 82 with exertion, um, she was started on supplemental oxygen with minimal improvement in her saturations. She had an echo done, uh, which showed per early positive bubble study concerning for interatrial shunting. Uh, now let's take a look at uh, background on carcinoid heart disease. Best characterized by plaque-like deposits of fibrous tissue on the endocardium of valve. Um, usually affects the right heart much more than the left heart. Reason being that vasoactive substances like serotonin, which are implicated in the pathogenesis of the disease, are cleared out by the lungs. If a shunt is present, however, you can see left heart involvement. There's a paucity of data on interventions in this arena. However, an 08 clinical trial on patients with carcinoid disease, severe PFOs, and New York Heart Association class 3 symptoms um, showed uh, improvement in functional capacity and symptoms with PFO closure. As you can see in the table here, the prevalence of involvement um, both sides of the heart uh, increases over time. Um, the right heart involvement much greater than the left heart involvement. Now let's take a look at some images. Uh, this TEE here, uh, we can see significantly thickened tricuspid leaflets and incomplete coaptation um, and dilated right side of tumor. The images here illustrate severe TR secondary to poor leaflet coaptation and thickening of the pulmonic valve leaflets uh, with moderate PI. And finally, now we can see the interatrial septum, the aneurysmal interatrial septum. Here we can see the significant flow across the PFO and the Doppler suggestive of bidirectional shunting. Noted here. Uh, now we can see the mitral valve leaflets uh, thickened, the associated moderate MR, also some aortic thickening in mild AI. Like I mentioned earlier, see the left uh, heart involvement here because of uh, PFO. Or uh, shunt present. She had a right heart cath done as well. Flow in the pulmonary circulation, 2.9 liters. Systemic circulation, 4.6 liters. Um, overall, uh, right to left shunt, much greater than left to right shunt. Her FA sat was 91. Um, her PA sat was 65 and right sided pressures, as you can see here, uh, four in the RA and 23 in the RA. So given that uh, her hypoxemia was thought to be largely secondary to the right to left shunt, uh, the decision was made to close the PFO. Um, the PFO was closed using a 30 millimeter cardioform device under intracardiac echo guidance. Her FA sat at the end of the case was 100%, increased from 91% prior to the PFO closure device being placed. Noted here. So post-procedurally, there was a marked improvement in her exertional symptom and functional capacity, no longer required any supplemental oxygen, and her SpO2 was greater than 95% on Romer. Uh, her follow-up echo showed no residual flow across the PFO, persistently dilated right atrium and right ventricle, and moderate TR, which was previously severe. Uh, there's no plans for surgical interventions given marked improvement in her symptoms and reduction in the TR uh, from hemodynamic effects of decreased shunting. 
Um, she would also be very high risk for surgery uh, given the age and pregnancy. Here are my references, and I'd like to thank Dr. Luna and Dr. Breyer for their guidance. Thank you for your time.